Good evening guys, it's Rob again, and tonight we're going to go over what I feel like is the most important aspect of tuning, uh, the hardest one it seems for everyone to get a grasp on, um, but the one that can be the most beneficial or the most detrimental, um, it, it is the reason that all of these really fast uh, stock bottom end records exist um, because the people running those programs understand that how to work this part of the equation, how to work this part tuning, um, and then the ones that don't know how to work this part uh, end up with a lot of broken parts on their hands for no reason. Okay, And that is, of course, ignition timing. Okay. Now, when we speak of ignition timing, and I say 40 degrees of ignition timing, what that means is before top dead center. Ignition timing is X amount of degrees before T, D, C. If you don't know why we light the fire before T, D, C, then I'll explain it to you. Fuel takes an X amount of time to light. Some of it's really slow, some of it's really fast, but either way, there is a time period from the time that you start the ignition, which is when the spark plug goes off, to the time that the flame inside the combustion chamber has reached peak temperature, pressure, and velocity. And during this time, that's how many degrees it takes to light that thing and get it going. So if, let's say we light it at 40 degrees before TDC. We hope that it's not actually burning and lit completely until at least one, two, five degrees after TDC. Okay? If we light it too soon and it happens at zero degrees TDC or it happens before, any time before TDC, You have detrimental catastrophic failure, and I'll tell you why that is. Inside the combustion chamber, you have your piston, you have your combustion chamber and your spark plug, and then below the piston, of course, you have the pin, the rod, and the crankshaft, okay? When we light this thing, we're going to light it before TDC. So the crankshaft will be in this position. Rod will be in this position. Piston is not quite to the top, but close. And we're going to light it here. Sparky spark. In hopes that the fire completely lights and is burning at peak pressure and velocity after the piston has crossed TDC, and in this position, because the crankshaft is going in this direction. If we light this too early, and the flame front is fully burning before it reaches top dead center, then the flame front is trying to push the crankshaft back in this direction while the crankshaft is trying to go this direction. That causes a lot of pressure in the combustion chamber. Way more than what you'll get from just making horsepower. And what happens when that happens is bent rods, broke cranks, busted cylinder walls, uh, lifted heads, blown head gaskets, the whole nine yards. In order to make a stock bottom end motor live, we need to light this later and later and later and later. So that way it's not pushing directly up and down on the crankshaft, the rod, the combustion chamber, and everything else. So that way when the flame front is at full velocity, the crank is already past TDC and started back down in the other direction. That way there's something to give. The crankshaft is absorbing all the energy in rotation instead of it absorbing it straight up and down where it's trying to push the bottom of the crank out. It's trying to break the block. It's trying to bend the rod. It's trying to take the head gasket out. So anytime that you're trying to make an SBE motor survive, stock bottom end motor survive, 
the least amount of timing that you can have, the better. Now, at some point in time, it becomes completely inefficient to run such low timing and detrimental to the valve train to do so. But up until that point, the least amount of timing you can use, the better. That's softer on parts. It's allowing more time for the crankshaft to get into the right position, for the rod to push on it and absorb the energy down and in a rotational manner, instead of trying to push up on the head, blow the head gaskets out, bend the rod, break the piston, bust the block, that whole nine yards. That's the reason low timing makes SBE motors survive for long periods of time. Jonathan Michael Capizzi has been doing this for quite a while. He uses extremely low ignition timing and high amounts of boost in hopes that he can light this fire just late enough that the crankshaft is in a position to where it'll absorb it rotationally instead of getting everything in a bind, breaking the rods, breaking the pistons, pushing the head gaskets out, breaking the block, um, that kind of ordeal. So if the sooner you can light it, the more ignition timing you can put in it, of course, the more power it's gonna make up until a certain point. Um, however, it's really, really hard on parts, so you better have a nice motor if you're gonna run a bunch of ignition timing. However, if you have a bunch of shit parts and you wanna make them live, please leave the ignition timing at home. Now, we're also gonna talk about something else that happens. Um, this happens specifically with turbo motors, and this is the reason that turbo engines do not mind low timing. A turbo engine has a window a very big window of timing, unless for whatever reason the turbo is limited for your class or whatever. You will have a scenario where you're lighting the fire at 25 degrees, you pull out 4 degrees, and the car picks up a mile an hour. And you're like, damn, how did that happen? And you go back, and at 21 degrees of time, and the back pressure was high. And then you get to looking, and that added back pressure made more boost. and in turn make more torque down low. And therefore the car picked up. That's the reason turbo motors are very, 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 very unresponsive to timing until you just jerk a shit ton out of them. There is on average, from what I have seen, a four to five degree window. Hang on just a second. There is on average in a turbo engine a four to five degree window. That does not add or subtract anything from your ET. It will move the power band around a little bit on the dyno, but it will not take anything away from your ET. So what we generally do is we start with a timing that we know is probably six or seven degrees too low from peak power. We leave a couple of degrees out during where we know peak torque. So let's say we got 20 degrees in it at peak horsepower. We'll have 18 degrees in it at peak torque. And then we start easing up on timing. We'll make a pass and we'll make it 21 and 19. And then we'll make it 20 and 22. And when the car starts stops gaining at least 5 100. So let's say we take it out and it runs uh, 523. And then we take it out again and we add a degree of timing and it runs a 518. If the next time we add a degree of time and it runs a 516, I'm done. You're not gonna gain a damn thing from adding any more time. And in fact, I'll probably go back and pull a couple degrees out, make sure the AFRs look good, and then we're gonna add another five pounds of boost. Um, there is no sense in over-timing a motor just to try to get every ounce out of it if you still have something left in the turbo, or whatever. I mean, if you got a blower and you can still change pulleys, you're not overspending the blower. If you've still got room to go up in nitrous, do not overtime the motor. You're gaining nothing out of it whatsoever. In fact, all you're going to do is gain a basket of broken shit to take home with you. So do not do that. When you start getting into a window to where you're only picking up a half a mile an hour, you're only picking up uh, a couple 100s, stop. 
Do not add any more time into it. You're not going to do yourself any good whatsoever. Uh, in fact, you're going to cost yourself a bunch of money if you keep going. Uh, another thing that I like to talk about as far as timing goes, uh, this all motor cars, uh, blower cars, and uh, nitrous cars are a lot more um, responsive to timing than turbo cars are. Turbo cars, if you start pulling timing out up to a certain point, they'll make more and more and more boost and they'll kind of overcome it. They really don't change much. So, when you start taking timing out of a turbo car, be prepared to take a bunch if you're trying to slow the car down. Um, hitting it with three or four or five degrees is probably not going to do anything. A nitrous car will take a couple tenths out of its time. Uh, but and, and it knocks a couple hundred horsepower out of it. But a turbo car will not do that. Um, if you're going to start fooling with the timing and you want to control a turbo car in 60 foot with timing, which I do like to do, um, what's going to end up happening is you'll notice that you're going to have to take 10, 15, 20 degrees out to make a difference. Sometimes when we're on the brake, we'll even take the car all the way down into the negatives. Um, to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. It can't live there long. It's going to start knocking exhaust valves out. It creates a lot of heat in the exhaust um, and it'll start cracking manifolds and whatnot. But for a split second, it can live there. So um, just keep that in mind. If you're going to take timing out to control a car in the 60 foot or 100, 100 foot mark, then the, the turbo car is going to take, a, you're going to have to be very aggressive with it to get anything out of it. Um, I do like to do that. I do like to take a car and leave it on as many RPMs as I can, as much boost as I can in order to get the converter to flash. Uh, and then I like to yank timing out of it so that way I can keep the boost in it. It's mechanically hard to get boost in a car once it leaves until it overcomes the converter. So the best thing to do is try to get it all in as soon as possible, get the converter rolling, get the air rolling through the motor, get it mechanically there, and then just electronically control it with the ignition. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. There's a lot of people that disagree with me on that, but I like to leave, get all the boost in the car as soon as possible, rip a bunch of timing out of it, and then I can put it in as quick as I want to put ignition timing in. You cannot do that with boost. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, ignition timing will not change your AFR on the gauge at all. So if you have an AFR reading that needs to change, don't think you can pull timing out of it and it's gonna fatten up or add timing in it and it's gonna lean up. That's not gonna happen. The same amount of air and the same amount of fuel is coming out the exhaust side. The AFR is going to be the same as far as the gauge is concerned. Uh, it will change the way the spark plug looks. So if you get a spark plug that looks fat, it looks lazy, uh, chances are if it looks good on the gauge, then it's good. Don't go ripping fuel out of it. Start putting a little timing in there. Um, there will come a point when you put a degree of timing in it, nothing happens. Um, and let's say you're running a combo that you're squeezing everything out of it. If you've put a degree of timing in it and nothing happens, add a couple pound per hour of fuel, um, richen it up a couple of points and see what happens then, then add another degree of timing in. Um, class racing is really hard um, when, it come, when it gets down to the last little bit of everything you can get out of the combo and some people don't do that. They'll put timing in, it slows down, they stop. Put some more fuel in it, fatten the car up. Um, if, if you put some fuel in it and it doesn't change, the car doesn't slow down, then go back and add another degree of timing in it, see if it picks up. Uh, chances are it generally will. Uh, uh, combinations will take a lot more fuel and timing than you think they will when you work them both in combination. But either way, um, be very careful with timing on SBE stuff. Turbo cars have a big window to tune in, so uh, don't get greedy with the timing on those. Um, and then once again, turbo cars are not responsive as nitrous cars and all motor cars are to timing. So if you start trying to manipulate a turbo car with timing, make sure you take a bunch out. You're going to have to get aggressive with it. But either way, um, somebody else asked timing as far as fuel goes. Um, in my personal opinion, uh, just as I stated earlier, 93 octane is going to be the most susceptible to timing and you'll have to be the most careful with it. Um, if you're running a boosted application or you're running a nitrous application um, and you're going to 93, just know that as you add power, the timing is going to exponentially just dive like crazy on 93. 
So if you start out with 30 degrees, on 10 pounds of boost, you may be at 20 degrees, and on 20 pounds of boost, you may be at 10 degrees, um, whereas if you had something like C16 in it, it may look something like 30, uh, 25, and 20, and that's as low as you're gonna go. So be prepared to get way more aggressive. The tuning windows are really tight on uh, lower octane fuels. Um, E85 and C16 is gonna be pretty close together as far as what I like to look for as timing goes. And all of that's gonna depend on the combustion chamber size and shape, uh, the piston shape, the displacement, the bore of the cylinder, the stroke. Uh, it, it'll come down to intake runner size, camshaft profile. It, all of that plays into how much time in a car can run. So each and every individual combo is a little different. Uh, most LS stuff is really close to the same. If you have them on the same fuel, they're going to take about the same timing. Um, so, just and that's just because all the cylinder heads are made about the same. There's a ton of options out there for all the old school motors. So, depending on the cylinder head, piston shape, bore diameter, all of that, the, the timing is going to be, it can be wildly different. Um, so, keep that in mind. What may work for one guy's combination is not going to work for your combination. That's the reason a lot of combinations need to be tuned by somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, but methanol, of course, is going to take a ton of timing compared to the other stuff. Um, but either way, uh, timing can be very, very beneficial. Uh, and knowing how it works can be very, very beneficial to making weak combos live. And it can be very, very beneficial to making strong, strong combos go very fast. So anyway, if you have any questions... Please leave them in the comments. I'll be glad to answer them. Um, or give us a call, send me a message on Facebook. Um, if you're anywhere in the United States and you need some help, I can, I can usually jump in on TeamViewer, take a look at what you have going on. Or there's a couple of guys that really like to pay me to just come out and do it in person. Uh, and I will do that too. I'll travel anywhere in the United States. I'll travel to anywhere in Australia, Europe, um, some parts of the Philippines. So if you have something that you need done, don't hesitate to call us. We can usually do it worldwide. It doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, this is Rob for Rob Drop Shop. I'm, I'm sorry for rambling on, but timing is, a, timing is a huge, huge conversation that, that has a lot of different, um, I guess you'd say, sections, avenues to go down. Uh, so I probably didn't even cover everything tonight. Uh, it was basically just a big rambling session, but... Timing is kind of one of those things that if you do this, you got to do this, and if you got to do that, then you got to do this. So it, it can jump back and forth, and I apologize for all the rambling. But either way, if you guys need anything, please give us a call. Don't hesitate. Uh, I'll be glad to answer any questions. I'll be glad to help you uh, in any possible way that I can. Um, but either way, have a good evening. Have a good weekend. We'll see you. <clears throat>